thank you for joining us. We will do our best to carry on. I think I could say on behalf of Wilma and her legacy, her dedication to health, to wellness, to economic development, her all-in agenda to end poverty, her many years of dedication to the county, previously as a supervisor in the legislature and now back as a supervisor for 11 years, we have to take our hats off and thank her and her family for what she has given to Alameda County. We will do our best to carry on. We welcome those of you who have joined us and, and then I'll rejoin us and we'll introduce our first speaker. As I think most of you on the call know, my name is Bernita Reagan. I'm the Director of Community and Client Relations with Meriwether and Williams. We administer under the General Services Agency from whom you will hear today the Contractor Technical Assistance Program. Part of what we do is bring information and upcoming opportunities to small businesses. And this District 3 outreach had been in the planning phases for a number of months. We were really excited to um, present this for Supervisor Chan and for her district. And I'm just gonna give a little bit of information about the district. And then we're gonna go to our first speaker who will be Kimberly Gassaway followed by, uh, and Kimberly is the interim director of GSA, will be followed by Joan Quilio, a contract um, compliance officer with GSA, David Lau from Public Works Agency. Um, and we'll hear about upcoming projects and equity programs that the county has. And then it's our delight to present Rachel Guinness to talk about Hello Housing's Bright in Your Own Backyard Accessible Accessory Dwelling Unit Project, which will provide a whole range of resources for community in Alameda County interested in adding ADUs and JADUs in their, in their own backyards. And then we'll hear from Carol Henry about resources available. Thank you all again for joining us. And I'm just gonna talk a little bit about District 3. I think many of you know, it includes the cities of Alameda, San Leandro, San Lorenzo, Ashland, Hayward Acres, Chinatown, Fruitvale, Melrose, part of Havens Court, and all of her district is below 580. So I talked a little bit about her priorities. I think folks know very hemphatic, very heavy emphasis on housing, affordable housing, um, food as health. She sponsored a, a farm in Union City that will be utilized by BIPOC farmers, black farmers in particular, to make food available to communities to help restore and promote health. So we, there just are no words to express our sadness in the passing of Supervisor Wilma Chan. Um, but we know the staff at Alameda County, particular, particularly GSA, who we have the pleasure to work with, will carry on her legacy. And I'm gonna go to our first speaker, who's Kimberly Gassaway, who's Interim Executive Director of the General Services Agency, who will talk about the county's priorities and initiatives. And I'm gonna ask Kimberly to introduce yourself before you begin speaking. Thank you, Kimberly, for joining us. Thank you, Bernita. I am a little taken back right now. So um, yeah, I'm Kimberly Gassaway, the Interim Director of GSA. And thank you everyone for joining. Um, I've worked at GSA for 11 years. Some of you may know I had a short stint, less than a year at healthcare. So I became even more familiar with a lot of Wilma's work in um, in the healthcare area. She was the uh, chair of the health committee as well as the board member and past board member. So we can go ahead and start the slides as I think, yeah, that'll help. Oh, good, someone corrected that. Thank you so much. <laughs> what we do, so GSA, we provide general services agency, a wide range of support services to all the county departments. And our work directly impacts our communities because we build structures, buildings, and transform communities. We've built 
libraries, youth centers. Um, what's not on here is the East County Courthouse. And we provide an op opportunities for local businesses and work towards ensuring county work practices. Minimize negative impacts to the environment. Our sustainability office so works with all county departments in that for sustainability in government operations. And we take great pride in the work that we do. Um, in addition to building buildings, we maintain them. So we have janitorial and maintenance staff to over 130 facilities countywide. We have a procurement department that purchases um, for goods and services for all county departments, totaling over $318 million. And then we have our capital programs department and they design and construct the buildings that I was talking about. Um, right now valued at over $839 million. And then we have a strategic planning and real property portfolio um, department that manages the county owned as well as leased real estate and space programming planning. Like what is the county's long-term plan around space utilization for, for a government? Next slide. So long, I won't read every word, but along our priorities and initiatives, we're committed to the board's mission of inclusion and diversity and increasing small business participation is a lot of our efforts across all procurement categories and reducing the barrier to entry for small businesses. Small businesses are the backbone of our nation's economy and they're a critical component of the county's procurement process. We're responsible for obtaining goods and services, as I mentioned, for county agencies to maintain their operations and deliver services to the county community. GSA's procurement and support services acts as a neutral independent party responsible for objectively protecting the counties and the public's interests regarding contracting while utilizing best practices and industry standards to ensure a transparent, fair, um, competitive process. We openly communicate contract opportunities using a variety of government portals and websites. And you'll hear more about how we advertise from our next presenter, Joan Quilio. Next slide. So we have a few um, upcoming projects for that are going to go out for advertise for construction. One is a tenant improvement at 2000 San Pablo, and we'll be advertising for the general contractor in November. The next is the sheriff's department. Um, we're building a training tower and we'll be looking to advertise in November also. And then the third is at Highland Hospital. We'll be advertising in November for exhaust fan replacement and waterproofing of the K building. Next slide. So we have just put together a new website. It's really um, pretty great if you wanna go check it out, gsa at acgov.org. It talks a lot about the work we do and how we serve the public. And it also has all of um, upcoming projects under the doing business with us tab, which Joan will share more of that with you. Thank you, I'm excited to be here with all of you and looking forward to the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome Joan Quilio, who we've had the pleasure of working with in GSA for several months now. But I, at first, I really wanna thank you, Director Gassaway, for your help, your assistance thus far. And we really look forward to continuing to work with you on policy initiatives that we know will strengthen opportunities for small and minority businesses in Alameda County. So thank you so much for carrying through with this presentation. Um, and next we will go to Joan. And Joan, if we could ask you to introduce yourself first uh, and then go ahead and give your presentation. Thanks, Bernita. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Joan Quilio. Uh, I am a contract compliance officer with the General Services Agency in the Office of Acquisition Policy. Uh, we are, support our leadership and our local business communities um, in making recommendations for best practices for, um, for uh, policy around procurement. Um, <clears throat> can I have the first slide, please? I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about some of our, our business equity and workforce inclusion programs that are specific to construction. Uh, the Enhanced Construction Outreach Program is the business equity program established by our Board of Supervisors and applied to GSA projects that are over $125,000 in value. 
Uh, Alameda County is a vibrant and diverse community, and we want to reflect that in the firms that we do business with. Uh, ECOP encourages the participation of small, local, and diverse contractors in um, building uh, our projects. And we do that, the ECOP does this by setting goals specific to each covered project. Uh, the goals for, uh, there is a 60% goal for local business enterprises, and these are businesses of any size that are located in Alameda County. Uh, there is a 20% participation goal for small local business enterprises. And just a note here, a small local business enterprise is also a local business enterprise. So I just want to make that clear that the 20% um, on the small local is included in that 60% local. Um, the small firms are, um, must be located in Alameda County and meet the uh, criteria for the state uh, small business administration size standard for small. The, those local and small local goals are overall contracting goals that can be satisfied by the prime contractor, subcontractors, or any material suppliers. We also have inclusionary goals that are specifically subcontracting. So these cannot be fulfilled by the prime contractor. Primes must subcontract out or purchase uh, supplies from uh, at a rate rather of 15% to certified minority business enterprises and 5% to certified women business enterprises. Uh, there are a number of certifying agencies uh, that, that we list in our program, uh, but those, those businesses must be certified. Uh, and just to note, the MBE and WBE firms that are not required to be located in Alameda County, they can be located anywhere. Um, the, the, uh, in the event, that um, prime contractors cannot meet these goals. There are prescriptive good faith efforts that are required and documentation must be submitted uh, and reviewed uh, prior to awarding any contract. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. The, um, the ECOP or Enhanced Construction Outreach Program is uh, a business utilization business equity program, but we also have a workforce inclusion program that applies to our construction projects. The Project Stabilization and Community Benefits Agreement serves as the countywide project labor agreement. And the purpose of the agreement is to ensure labor harmony on county projects, uh, job sites, to utilize skilled and trained workforce in building our projects, and also to provide opportunities for good paying jobs with benefits to local Alameda County residents. Excuse me. The project, or PSCBA, I'll speak in the acronym now, um, is an agreement that was negotiated and entered into between the county and the uh, building trades. Uh, for the most part, it applies to all construction contra uh, contracts awarded by the Board of Supervisors that, are that uh, have a value of $1 million or more. Uh, there are some differences that are applied to the Public Works Agency, uh, different thresholds, and you'll hear about those from David Lau in a little, little bit later in the presentation. But the, P the uh, PSCBA requires contractors at all tiers to sign an agreement to be bound uh, for the life of the project. And for non-union or merit shop, open shop contractors, this can be a, this is a single project agreement. Uh, and there are pre-job meetings that are required before starting work or entering the job site. Um, there are workforce uh, local hire goals that are applied to all of these projects. Uh, there is a minimum 40% uh, local work for local hire, which means a minimum of 40% of all craft hours uh, worked on projects shall be worked by Alameda County residents. So this is a really uh, a good opportunity for our local residents to participate on, in our projects. We also have um, a minimum of 40% of all apprentice hours 
to be worked by disadvantaged resident apprentices. And those are apprentices who may come from a historically disadvantaged group or who are uh, simply unemployed um, at the start of work. So we have those, those opportunities for um, new apprentices or first and second year apprentices to participate on these projects. Can I have the next slide, please? Thanks. Uh, some of the, the uh, Kimberly mentioned uh, a few of the larger projects that are moving forward fairly quickly. So I wanted to show you where you can find these on our website. Um, Kimberly showed the, the beautiful uh, front page of our website. And there are a couple ways it could be gsa.acgov.org or the old, if, you, if you're old school, like some of us, and you do the www still, you can go acgov.org forward slash GSA. But when you go to our website, you wanna click on doing business with us. And that's going to, to give you an opportunity to view current contracting opportunities uh, and recently awarded contracts as well. There's a, a lot of different tips and tricks, or excuse me, not tips and tricks, but vendor tips and, um, and also some uh, other resource information. There's also an eGov subscription that is available to you free of charge. Uh, and this is, you can sign up to be notified anytime a new project or a new opportunity posts to our website or advertises. So these are, these are the ways that you, can, um, that you can access our projects. We do also uh, send out notices uh, if you're if you're subscribed to eGov, so that you will you will get the details of projects, um, and also our CTAP partners at Meriwether and Williams put out a weekly contractor blast that is full of great information that has current projects for GSA, Public Works, and also our partner agencies uh, in the area and region. And with that, I will give it back to you, Bernita. Thank you so much, Joan. And I, I wanna thank you for continuing on with this presentation in light of the news that we received, both you and Kimberly. We just really share our condolences with you for the loss of one of your leaders. Um, so thank you very much. And um, our next speaker is gonna be David Lau, who is a construction manager with Alameda County Public Works. Uh, and he is, you see Bill Lapeer's name here but David has actually graciously stepped up to represent Public Works. Uh, and so we welcome you, Bill, and uh, Bill, we welcome you, uh, David, and we hope that you'll give a little bit of introduction to yourself. David? Yeah, myself. Thanks, Benita, yeah. for the introduction. So anyway, uh, yeah, Bill LaPere uh, has some other commitment, so he cannot make it today, but I was standing for him. And uh, so I'm the uh, Public Works uh, Construction Manager here, managing the uh, the construction to all, all of our capital projects. Uh, next slide, please. So today today's agenda is I'm gonna give a brief introduction of what we do and the upcoming contracting opportunity and some of the bidding process requirement for Public Works projects. So who we are, so basically Public Works, we maintain and also design, build and construct all the infrastructures within Alameda County right away, which includes uh, the roadway, uh, the storm drain, the traffic signal, the street lights, and our flight control channels, and also our pump stations. Uh, so all those infrastructures uh, within Alameda County are maintained and designed and constructed by Public Works. Next slide. So with that, uh, so we have some upcoming contracting opportunities that those projects will be going out to bid in the next couple of months. And we have two types of projects. The first type is the flight control projects uh, within the channel or within the pump station. Uh, so the first one is Laguna Creek and the second one is Alameda Creek South Levy modifications. The last one is the San Lorenzo Creek Bank repairs. And they go both going out, they all going out, you know, in December and January of this year.
So briefly go over the scope of work for uh, Laguna Creek Channel Improvement. The project is about $9.3 million and is going out, I think it's in December. And the scope of work is basically building some flood walls, which help us to prevent uh, flooding uh, during uh, like a hundred year storm. Next slide, please. And then the other one is uh, the San Lorenzo Creek Embankment Repairs. Uh, the project is about 1.8 mil and the uh, anticipated uh, advertising date is January, 2022. Uh, the scope of work of this project is basically repair uh, the slope uh, with a uh, concrete retaining wall with, uh, uh, with wood piles. So basically this is like a retaining wall project. So the other type of projects we do is are the road projects. So these are four road projects that will be going out to bid in the next uh, two months. Next slide, please. So this is the biggest out of all four, uh, which is about $16 million uh, project. Uh, the, the scope of this project is uh, to underground all the utility lines, which includes pg and &E, uh, at and and Comcast. And what we do is to uh, put in the joint trench and within the roadway. And then subsequently the utility company will come in to underground those uh, utility lines into out the joint trench that we install. And that's a pretty good size project is $60 million. And once the undergrounding is done, then we'll proceed with the uh, streetscape project, which is the next phase. So if you are interested in doing business with uh, Public Works, uh, there's a website where it will tell you the upcoming uh, bidding opportunities. So the links are all provided on this page which I, I believe that the uh, slide is actually shared with everybody. So the plans and spec are available in eSpay Blueprint and you can download it from them. Uh, but if you want to be notified uh, for any addendum after the, the the, the, the project is advertised, make sure that you register as a plan holder so you'll be notified of all the addendums. Uh, the other, uh, other link that you may want to, uh, uh, to know is that uh, every project will require a virtual pre bid meeting and each project has its own pre bid meeting requirement and date uh, and is uh, included in the uh, project spec. And the person who is in charge of setting up this preview meeting is Lorena. Um, and, and what you see is her email address. And you can also sign up for, uh, for notifications. If there's any project uh, going out to bid, uh, and you can go to the website and the link that, not the website, but the link that you see here. And under that link, you other than the project notification, uh, you can also uh, get information of how to get invited to those preview meetings. Next. So our compliance program, uh, unfortunately our compliance officer cannot join me today, but I'll talk about our program briefly. Um, so anything that that's under $100,000, uh, there's no compliance program, except for of course, prevailing pre wage is always a requirement. And we also encourage uh, participation of MBE, WBE and DBE for federal projects. For So for non-federal projects, the goals are 15% for MBE and 5% for WBE. And if you cannot meet those goals, uh, we suggest you to provide the paperwork that to show that you have made the good faith effort uh, in place of uh, meeting all those goal, uh, those MBE and WBE goal requirements. So we also, similar to GSA, we have a PLA and our threshold is anything under a million dollar, there's no PLA or agreement. But between one to three, we, you're required to have uh, trucking. And then over $3 million will be applicable to all trade. Thank you. Thank you so much, David, for stepping in at the last minute. And as, as David said, the slides and the presentation will be available for folks who may have missed some of it or who want this really vital information. Uh, and then really wanna thank you for making this information available. Um, 
And our next speaker I'm really delighted to present is Rachel Guinness of Hello Housing, who's gonna discuss Bright in Your Own Backyard, which is a new county program offering homeowner support in adding accessory dwelling units as well as a junior accessory dwelling units to their own property. Thank you for joining us to present today, Rachel. And again, if you could give a brief introduction of yourself to the audience and then go ahead with your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, certainly, um, thank you so much. It's just a real pleasure. Um, I'm so glad that uh, Hello Housing could participate in this conference. So thank you for making that possible. And I just wanna say, I was really just becoming familiar with uh, Wilma Chan's work myself. And um, and this is just a truly a sorrowful loss. And I just, I, I just wanna extend Hello Housing's, um, yeah. Um, yeah, just thoughts and, and you know, our, our thoughts are with you. What do you say? Um, anyway, um, with that said, um, just uh, so I am a, a, a licensed general contractor and a lead accredited residential designer. I'm the senior construction project manager for the Brighten Your Own Backyard ADU technical assistance program uh, that has been developed and, um, and is being um, rolled out by Hello Housing. Um, we're very excited about bringing uh, the program to Alameda County. It's, um, and right now we're at the stage where uh, it is open applications for both homeowners and contractors who are interested in, in participating uh, with the program. Uh, next slide, please. So just in case anybody isn't absolutely from familiar, I wanted to say that uh, ADUs and junior units are accessory dwelling units or junior accessory dwelling units. And um, what that means is basically uh, small homes also referred to as uh, second units, in-law apartments um, and uh, granny, granny flats and, and the like. So um, we offer a, um, a, a collection of services to homeowners to successfully see them through the development of these projects from uh, that includes feasibility, design, permitting, construction, and leasing. Um, what that means is we're creating a pretty much a funnel of shovel-ready projects. Um, and we start with feasibility. Homeowners who are interested in the idea of developing an ADU, we do a feasibility site visit and, um, and People who sign on with the program are basically go from wanting to, to being ready to create an accessory uh, dwelling unit. So they're ready, willing, and able. We are grounding them in the costs associated with uh, construction in this environment, which is, a, um, which is around $500 uh, per square foot. So there is no average project. They really range for anywhere from 300 square feet to 1200 square feet. So just as an average, a 600 square foot unit would be a project um, valued at approximately um, $300,000. So um, we, in our, in our process, we uh, refer um, people to professionals in the field. So we refer up to three um, uh, architects or designers and three contractors. And all of those are pre-vetted through the program. And so we go through and we make sure that all of our professionals are licensed and insured. And I'm sure that that's not a problem for any contractors who are working with Meriwether and Williams. We, we know that that is, you know, well taken care of. But I also want to point out that we, uh, that Hello Housing um, does not serve as a middleman in the process. In other words, uh, we refer homeowners to contractors and then contractors contract directly with homeowners uh, to build these units. Um, so um, because we're working directly with uh, the county in this case, uh, we do, um, we can help when it comes uh, through, um, when it comes to the permitting process, we, we, we don't get to fast track anything, but we do, we can help overcome hurdles in permitting. And, um, and then we also, at the end, provide uh, leasing support so that um, people know how um, to navigate uh, the rules around fair housing and the like. Um, so uh, next slide, please. So um, 
So the program is working with homeowners, um, the initial program that um, are living in the unincorporated areas of the county. Um, the homes uh, or the properties have to be owner occupied. So homeowners can live either in the main home or they can be downsizing and move to the ADU. And we're finding that these early adopters, because this is really a, a burgeoning market. This is people coming in, you know, like we are all coming in at the beginning of a burgeoning market to um, create additional units on residential properties. And under state law, you're actually allowed to create two, one accessory dwelling unit and one junior accessory dwelling unit. But we're finding these early adopters are generally motivated uh, by family needs. Uh, not always, but over 70% are interested in housing friends or family and um, often have some immediate family need. So next slide, please. So um, the goal of the program is really to create a public private partnership between the county and homeowners. Um, it's really a, a goodwill program to, to address the, the, the housing issue in the county. And this is a, a, a housing strategy that the county is employing to uh, not only create affordable rental units, but also to help uh, stabilize um, homeowners um, given the high cost of living in this region. So, um, so in this initial program, we're, we will be creating 18 of these units in the unincorporated area uh, this year. And our hope is to see the program expand throughout Alameda County in the coming years. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so the opportunity. So we are seeking experienced, motivated, trusted professionals and specifically contractors. Um, um, because one of the biggest requests we get from homeowners is help to uh, putting together their professional team. And again, you know, I, you know, I have a, you know, I have both backgrounds as a as a contractor and uh, and and a, and a designer. And so um, we go through specifically and vet all of our um, professionals, and um, and make sure that you're, you know you're ready to take on, um, you know, a pretty, uh, uh, a pretty uh, uh, extensive pipeline of projects. Um, so, so the benefit uh, is really, um, is really just giving uh, the workforce in Alameda access to this opportunity. Um, we're looking again for seasoned professionals uh, that we can uh, help that we can help by providing a pipeline of projects um, to and um, and the the program offers homeowners uh, guidance, but I um, through the entire process, which it's a you know it's a multifaceted process. So um, it, the the guidance is, has been uh, uh, greatly appreciated. But we're also uh, we actually also support all of our partners in this. So when it comes to contractors, we're helping to educate homeowners about things. We're helping um, make sure the communications are effective and smooth. Um, and problem solving where needed. So the goal is to make sure that these are these projects are completed successfully. And one example I could uh, give that's you know timely is that you know anyone who's working in this space knows that we've seen supply chain issues increase the costs around construction. And so um, basically, because I have an overview, we have an overview of you know the building environment. We're letting our clients know that we're seeing prices for materials go up, you know, as much as ten percent um, across the board. And so we can prepare clients for that. So when contractors when contractors come back and say, yeah, um, you know, we've had an issue because of COVID their clients are ready to hear that news and, and, and they're, they're more trusting because they've heard it um, by somebody who's representing them on, on the project. So, um, so if all of that sounds um, interesting to you, and I certainly hope it does, um, I hope you will go to hellobright.org. Um, you can sign up on our ADU um, pros page and there is a request for qualifications I hope um, you will fill out. And you're very welcome to, um, to reach out to me uh, directly. Uh, next slide, please. Um, 
And uh, if you have any uh, questions about the program, if you know, you're having any issues filling out the RFQ, and I just uh, very much look forward to the opportunity uh, to talking with you all about uh, the work we're just about to start embarking on. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you joining us today, Rachel. And we at CTAP are really excited to be working with Hello Housing and Bright in Your Own Backyard because we know these are the kind of jobs that we think many of the contractors that we work with are more than equipped to do. So thank you for joining us. We're glad you're gonna stick around to take some questions if they come in as well as you, Joan and David and Kimberly. Um, so thank you for sticking with us in light of the awful news that we've received today. And we really appreciate all that you're doing with your magnificent expertise in building affordable housing. And we, we look forward to joining with you as a partner. So thank you for joining us. And lastly, but certainly not least is Ms. Carol Henry, who is program manager for the Alameda County Contractor Technical Assistance Program. And Carol's gonna tell all of you who are contractors and interested in taking advantage of any of these opportunities that you heard about today to look at what has come through in terms of information, see what you might be interested in, and Carol can really help you get prepared and understand and connect with those opportunities that you've heard about today. So Carol, please talk to us about the Contractor Technical Assistance Program. Thank, thank you, Bernita. Good afternoon. As Bernita said, I'm Carol Henry. I'm the Program Manager for CTAP. CTAP is sponsored by the Alameda County General Services Agency, and it's administered by Meriwether and Williams Insurance Services. I'm gonna talk briefly about the resources the county has available to small contractors. <clears throat> the county recognizes the barriers such as, small, as bonding and technical requirements that impede small minority contractors participation on county contracts. The county is committed to increasing the participation of small and minority contractors by investing resources to provide support to the local small contracting community to remove those barriers and grow their participation on county contracts, as well as increase access to other opportunities. The county understands the role that preparing small contractors for bonding plays in building contractors capacity that help grow their businesses, hire local workers, and contribute to the overall economic health of Alameda County. Spending contractor dollars locally generates a positive multiplicative economic impact, creates local jobs and local spending, which equals more local taxes and more support to the county's diverse communities. It also increases the pool of contractors better able to compete, which uh, brings down the contracting costs. Next slide, please. A little about us. Over the last 24 years, Meriwether and Williams has created and implemented unique risk management programs for public entities throughout the state of California, which grow emerging contractor capacity, increase bidding pools, and create cost savings for program sponsors. We have an extensive experience in policy, advocacy, and program development, creating inclusion, equity, and economic development. Since 1997, we've helped small and emerging contractors obtain bonds to 1.03 billion in public work projects, which we've only had two defaults. Next slide, please. <clears throat> About CTAP. Previously, the program was called CBAP, the Contractor Bonding Assistance Program. It was established in February of 20, uh, 2008. Since, uh, <clears throat> since we were established, we established bondability for 38 contractors for a total bondability of 23.5 million, with 23 of the participants having no prior bondability. CTAP, um, <clears throat> Contractors have participated on contracts such as the Highland Hospital, Juvenile Justice System, East County Hall of Justice, just to name a few. 
How it works is the county has created a pool of funds to entice surety companies to issue bonds on behalf of small contractors. The county will put up 40% collateral or $750,000, whichever is less, for the surety to hold for the duration of the project. In 2019, the county changed the name to CTAP and expanded the services to include technical assistance. To date, we've held 364 free workshops and seminars to provide contractors with information on, contract, on contracting opportunities with the county and other resources. Next slide, please. <clears throat> we do this by doing a assessment of your current business capacity. From there, we create individual work plans to increase bonding and pre-qualification capacity. <clears throat> we have what we call our one-on-one -on -one business development services, where we work to address each of the contractor's needs. We assist in uh, attaining training and education on construction industry matters, such as safety, insurance, bonding, labor relations, and so on. I'd like to encourage each of you to visit our YouTube channel where you'll find videos on a wide array of subjects that we have created in mind. Additionally, <clears throat> you'll find a link to our uh, Alameda Contractor Weekly. This uh, weekly newsletter provides not only upcoming bid opportunities for Alameda County projects, but it also provides information for prime contractors seeking subcontractors for opportunities. So if you haven't done so already, please check out both our YouTube channel and our weekly newsletter. Thank you for your time. And with that, I turn it back over to Bernita. Thank you so much, Carol. And I didn't give you the opportunity to introduce yourself. Um, Carol, as many of you know, has more years than she probably wants me to say, but an enormous expertise in working with small and minority contractors to help them access bonding. So before we get to the q and I just wanna take my hat off and say, thank you all who participated and particularly the CTAP staff, Carol, Judy, Lila, Jordan, who are really committed to making our resources available to those of you in the community who are interested in working on Alameda County projects. Um, we're very proud of the work that we've been able to do with GSA and with the county. And for those of you who don't know, we also have similar programs in San Francisco and a regional program in Los Angeles serving Metro, the county, and the city of Los Angeles. So again, thank you for everyone who has uh, participated. And uh, we look forward to your questions and hope that we can provide answers. So thank, thank you. you all. Yeah. Thank you, Bernita, and um, uh, all of the presenters. Um, so we do have some questions that came in, um, and the first one is, uh, it, it might be for GSA, I believe it's for GSA, um, so Joan and maybe Kimberly, um, this question is for GSA, so it says, last time I attended this meeting, there was a design build firefighter training facility mentioned in the pipeline. Has that project been awarded, and if not, is there an update on the procurement timeline? So this is Kimberly. Um, the project right now, we are working with the A&E team on the design for the bridging design and it will be going out to bid, but they're in the middle of the scoping and design process. Is that Thank you. I don't have a date. Thank you. Um, I don't believe I have any other questions, but... Uh, we're happy to take on more, let's see. Okay, here's one. Um, being a wholesale supplier of empty sandbags, how do I work with the county? So are you wanting to be a provider of those? Okay, so you would, um, you, first of all, I don't know if you're a small local emerging business, and you can go on the county website and Joan might want to help with that as well. 
to get yourself signed up and be on the list. So make sure you're getting um, all the announcements. Joan, you want to provide a few more details? Uh, I was going to say, I, I think Kimberly's direction of, of looking at the county's small local emerging business program, that is the business equity program that applies to goods and the acquisition of goods and services. So uh, a little different than the construction, but as a supplier, um, I would encourage you if you're located in Alameda County to look at SLEB certification. Um, yeah, so okay, he's saying you he's are not local, running. you're, pro okay, I believe you can register as a vendor. Yeah. Um, you can certainly go to, um, to the link, if you go to, to gsa.acgov.org, doing business with us, you can um, register for eGov delivery. So if there's any, any um, if that procurement opportunity comes up, you'll be notified. So those, those are the steps that I would, I would take. And you can certainly feel free to reach out to me um, after this. Uh, and if for any, you know, we can talk offline um, for other resources. Thank, Thank you. you so mm -hmm. um, and to answer your, um, another attendee's question regarding the, um, if this presentation will be provided. Yes, the presentation will be provided in a um, post follow-up email to all of the registrants and the attendees. So um, the PowerPoint as well as a recording of this um, webinar. Um, and that includes all of the um, links to resources from Hello Housing, GSA, and Public Works. Hey, uh, Judy, someone had a question about how to reach someone. I'm, I think they may have been talking about CTAP. Let's see. Am I the only one that saw? <laughs> um, so that question is from RT. RT, uh, could you uh, be specific as to who you would like to reach or if it's all of us, our contact information is available. Let me go ahead and pull that up. It's on the last slide. And is that what you were referring to, RT Singh? CTAP? Well, you'll get it anyway because you'll get a copy of this presentation, which has all all of our contact info on it. So here's um, all of the presenters' contact information. Um, again, it's also, it, it will be provided to you in a post follow-up email. Um, but if you want to, if you want to take um, some of the emails down right now, feel free to do so. There's some phone numbers for Joan and Carol and Bernita. Um, feel free to reach out, uh, reach out to Lorena for, at Public Works and um, Joan, GSA and Kimberly and um, Rachel at Hello Housing. Okay, well, thank you all for attending. Thank you, Judy, for coordinating and managing. Thank you so much to all the speakers. We really, really appreciate you. And thank you to all the attendees and we look forward to you at the next session.